Welcome everybody, thanks for joining us today for a tech check on the newly released Rocky Mountain Altitude. Three alloy complete bikes available and five models of carbon bikes. The pricing for the new Rocky Mountain Altitude starts at $39.99 and goes up to $10,999 with a $4,100 carbon frame set option. So what exactly is so new about the completely redesigned Rocky Mountain Altitude? Just about everything. From the size-specific rear triangle to the LC2R suspension platform, the adjustability of the frame geometry, their new and improved Penalty Box 2.0 storage system, the new altitude is really meant to boogie and get down. Uh, some of the features that we'll be discussing are unique to the carbon bike. For example, the new Penalty Box 2.0 is only found on the carbon, but many of the other features do carry over across the alloy and carbon frames. Here we have the Carbon 70 coil model bike. Uh, sits pretty centrally in the line. It is the only coil sprung option. The other bikes all feature air shocks. So I think we're pretty happy that we got the coil. Actually, I think the suppleness and sensitivity off the top are very attractive traits that we're very happy to see. And we'll talk a little bit about that some more when we get into Rocky's virtual pivot suspension, the LC2R platform. So focusing on the frame first, we've got, again, small through extra large sizes. The size small is a 27 and a half inch wheel bike. Medium through XL can run dual 29 like we have ours set up, or you can flip the chip and run a mixed wheel setting. Uh, what's really neat about the new bike is they each have their own size specific rear triangles. Uh, again, the goal with Rocky Mountain and this new altitude is to increase stiffness, rigidity, and performance for aggressive mountain bikers. And having that size specific chainstay will maximize the stiffness for each size rider, but also improve the ride quality for smaller or heavier riders, right? They're not having to design one triangle for different dimensions and weights. Similarly, the suspension tunes do get slightly modified for small bump, mid-stroke support, and end-of-stroke progression. Uh, but again, we'll get into the suspension a little bit more later. Moving up to the front, you do have three settings in the Reach Adjust headset, uh, five millimeter increments, and you'll have three positions in either short, neutral, or long. And again, each gives you a five millimeter adjustment in Reach. Further adjustment and tuning to your geometry can be done here at the Ride 4 flip chip. If you hadn't guessed it yet, the intentions of the new altitude are aggressive, hard charging riders. Uh, with that, the adjustability of the geometry is something that a lot of riders are gonna enjoy. Today, where we're at testing and filming, the longer lower slacker bit isn't all that it's cracked up to be, so we're gonna put a little lift kit on this bike and jack up the rear end in hopes of not bashing our pedals on quite so many embedded lava rock. All right, so just a couple of minutes, even here on the tra trail side, and we are able to make the adjustment. One thing to note is that the shock bushings do have a flat or chamfered side. So if you're running this Ride 4 chip in certain positions, uh, you wanna make sure you have that flat side closest to the down tube. That way you're not gonna potentially damage your frame. Uh, but where we're gonna be going into the four position, we're all clear. Now it's time to get back on the trail. Getting into the suspension package on the altitude, some of you diehard Rocky fans might recognize it is back. It, it was around many years ago and now the low center counter rotating link, which is their take on a virtual pivot suspension design is back. Uh, stiffness gains, low center of gravity, weight, shock, all the linkage down below, oversized bearings, a lot has been done for, I guess, the sake of stiffness in the frame as well as suspension compliance and intended application. Attention has been given to the pedaling platform, uh, the suppleness as well. I would say it's been quite impressive. Granted, we are on the coil shock model here, but the bike does a pretty good job of pedaling over rough, chunky, and rocky terrain. Thanks to the tuning given throughout the size range, I'm five foot 11. Uh, 190 pounds on a size large. I found that the tuning for mid-stroke support and then ramp up like the ending stroke progression has been pretty nicely balanced. 
So before you get to the sag range, Rocky's given it a three to one leverage rate. Then moving past the sag range, you move into a linearly progressive rate. And then for the final 25 millimeters, that rate changes and you get a more progressive end of stroke feel. Uh, overall, they claim about a 36% progression rate throughout the stroke of travel. So uh, obviously it is coil friendly and also air compatible. So kind of the, the preference is up to you as the rider for your local terrain and what exactly you value out of your ride experience. At 71.99, our Carbon C70 build is actually uh, probably about the one that we would have picked if we could have had the choice to pick one for a test. And we will be doing just that. So after this little tech check is out, we will continue to pass this bike along and let more of our riders put miles on it. But uh, Shimano XT drivetrain and brakes, the Fox factory suspension, uh, the wheel spec, the fact that Cush Core comes installed, I think are all nice options for riders who are looking to really push hard in rough and chunky terrain. I have not been a super huge fan traditionally of the Rocky Mountain suspension platform. I've, I've thought that they were a little bit stiff and rough. I love how their e-bikes feel, but their analog bikes to me were just a little bit rough off the top, kind of a, a la VPP, which you guys may know I'm not a huge fan of, um, but I was really surprised to see the improvements made on this bike. Now, perhaps it is because we're running the coil option and maybe that's why Rocky sent this model to us. But I will say I'm, I'm quite surprised with the suppleness and how this bike pedals and also handles kind of the high speed chatter. Uh, it will take a little more time to me for me to get 100% dialed on where I'm able to really blend that suppleness and sensitivity I want with some of the ramp towards the end. But overall, I'm, I'm like 95% of the way there, I think, and it's only been a few short rides. so. Pedaling is pretty solid. I'd say reaching down for that climbing switch on smoother road climbs or smooth single track, not too hard to get to and definitely helps eke out that little bit of efficiency. Uh, but leaving it open really gives you some impressive ground hugging traction on the way up. The one area I've been struggling a little bit with on the climb is the crank clearance. Uh, again, that was kind of why one of the reasons I switched to the high position in that Ride 4 chip. It's got 170 cranks. Uh, it's a tough call there because I know people are going to be putting a lot of miles on these. I think a 165 would be nice for at least our application and the place we ride and, and the type of terrain that we're regularly in. Uh, but I did see a bit of an improvement going up in that ride for chip. Other than that, the bike has been really impressive. I like the overall geometry, the feel of being in the bike. Um, I, I wish it had a little bit lower dropper post, perhaps the uninterrupted seat tube had something to do with a spec call there, but I find that when I get into some really steep gnarly descents, I'll drop that post a little bit farther out of the way. And when I do, I can really get into a nice, confident and powerful position. Uh, the bike, when I want to load it up in the corners, the way that it gives me a nice push off and snaps out, I really enjoy. Head tube angle is on the slacker side, I would say, but I really like that on the steep, gnarly and high speed stuff. Uh, and of course, I could either shorten that reach up or with the Ride 4 chip, make some adjustments if I live in an area that I need to have a little bit more of that tight, nimble nature. Um, but overall, I've been quite impressed with overall how the frame's put together. I think it looks absolutely awesome. Of course, looks only get you so far. Uh, we are going to troubleshoot a little bit of a rattle that we are having out of the top tube. You might hear that in uh, some of the riding clips. We've narrowed that down actually. It took quite a while, but it is the seat post rattling. So it's not the bike, it's not the cables. It's coming from the seat post and how it's echoing through the top tube of the bike. So we're gonna try and see if we can deaden that a little bit. Um, otherwise though, the bike is dead silent. And the first couple of rides out before that seat post started to rattle, uh, it was absolutely stealthy as it looks. I think for aggressive riders, who want something that's a 160, 170 enduro bike, something they might take into the park. This is really worth taking a close look at, heading to your local Rocky Mountain dealer, sitting on it if you can demo it or pedal it around the parking lot and just seeing if it suits you. To me, I think the Geo sits in a really nice spot. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the super long bikes and I think 
that Rocky have done a really good job. And of course, if you are, you can always lengthen it with those cups. Um, it looks good, it functions well. Pedaling performance is good enough for a 160, 170 bike and the downhill capabilities are there. It's fun to jump, it's stiff, it's snappy. Overall, really solid bike and I'm excited for more miles. Please, if you guys have any questions that you want to ask us as we continue to put miles for the long-term review, leave them down below. We'd love to keep them in mind as we continue to thrash on this thing. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you out on the trails.